Hey guys, I'm Joe from Marmoset, and this is Getting to Know Toolbag 3. In this episode, we'll dive into the fleshy pool that is the subsurface scattering shader, otherwise known as the skin shader. To enable the skin shader, you'll need to change the diffusion model from Lambertian to subsurface scatter. Once I've enabled this, not much has changed. To see a noticeable effect, I have to really crank up the scatter depth slider here. This is because the scale is not set up correctly. So let's go to the scene object and fix that. When I turn on the scale reference, you can see that the model is too large. If I change my imported units from meters to millimeters, now you'll see that the model is much too small. Now the scatter depth setting has a really exaggerated effect. So let's change it to centimeters, and that should be about right. Scene scale is important because the scatter depth setting defines in millimeters how far light penetrates into the surface. Let's take a detailed look at some of these settings. First off is scatter depth, which essentially controls how fleshy or waxy the surface is. The higher this value is set to, the more blurred or softened the lighting will become. The scatter depth color value determines the color bleed at the transition point from light to shadow. As I cycle through the hues here, you can see what sort of effect that has. For realistic human skin, a sort of peachy color tends to work best, though you may want to push the saturation here if you're going for a more stylized look. You can usually get a pretty good result with a simple color input. However, if you want more variation, you can load a texture map which will control both the value and the color of the scatter depth. This is commonly known as a subdermis map, and if you're loading one, make sure to set the color value to white so the color isn't being applied twice. This character has a few strips of blue paint. If I mask these areas in the subdermis map, the skin shading effect won't apply as strongly. If you want more control over the result, for instance if you like the way the shadows are blurred, but you'd like to have a sharper normal map, you can add an alpha channel to your subdermis map. What this will do is blend between a standard Lambertian shader and the skin shader. Now as I crank up the scatter depth setting, I'm not completely washing away the detail. It's important to note that blending between Lambertian and skin can break physically based rendering conventions. This is something you may not want to do if realistic results are your priority. The alpha channel can be used to mask non-skin elements like earrings as well. For further control over how shadows are blurred, you can go to the light object properties and adjust the width parameters. This will convert your light into an area light, which will enable you to create nice soft shadows for all the surfaces in your scene. So let's take a look at the translucency settings. First off, the translucency slider controls the overall intensity of the effect, while translucency depth determines how far light penetrates through the surface. Generally, the translucency depth should be set up so that the light doesn't shine all the way through the head, but rather only through thinner surfaces. The color value sets the color of the translucency effect. Generally, for a realistic result, you'll want sort of an orangish red color, but you can increase the saturation if you're going for a more stylized effect. If you go to your light object and change the color, you'll notice that the light color has an effect on the translucency as well. You can get pretty good results with the basic translucency settings, but if you want more control, you can load a translucency map as well. In the translucency map here, most of the areas of the face have been masked out. This way we can really focus the effect on the ears. As I move my light around, you'll get a sense of how interesting and dynamic this effect can be. The last of the translucency settings is translucency scatter, which determines how soft the translucency effect is. The final setting in the skin shader rollout is fuzz, which is sort of a diffuse for now. This effect simulates how fine hairs catch light at grazing angles. Fuzz tends to work best when you give it a mask. It can be a simple noise texture, or better yet, a map filled with fine hairs. Fuzz can be colored as well, which can be useful if you're going for a stylized look or trying to mimic certain fabrics, like velvet. You can mask the fuzz effect by the gloss map as well, which can save some time if you don't want to author a custom fuzz map. That covers it for the basics of the subsurface scattering shader. While skin is a very common example, most surface types that are not made out of metal scatter light as well. For instance, marble, or plastic, or rubber, or jade, or wax. Let's take a look at a couple of these materials and see how they're created. I set the scatter depth pretty high to get that nice, soft, waxy look, and I'm using an orange value for the color. For the translucency, I'm using sort of a peach color. I've loaded a scatter depth mask here as well, using an alpha channel with a bright gray value so that I can retain a little bit of that normal map detail. 
I've cranked up the translucency depth setting to really exaggerate that effect. I'm using the same mask here to isolate the translucency to the ears as well. Now let's take a look at Jade. Here I'm using a pretty high value for the scatter depth as well, and I've masked the alpha channel again to bring in some of the normal map detail. I'm using a bluish color for both the scatter depth and translucency values. I'm not using a mask for the translucency because I really want the light to shine all the way through the model. Before I finish up, I'd like to touch on another topic as well. While not actually a part of the skin shader, detail normal maps are a great way to add another layer of micro detail, like skin pores, to your material. To start, change the surface model to detail normals. This will give you an additional slot for a detail normal map. There's a setting for tiling and another for offset. You can see what sort of effect this has as I toggle the map on and off. You can load a mask as well, for instance, to make sure that the detail normal map doesn't show up on the lips. That wraps up this episode of Getting to Know Toolbag 3. The subsurface scattering shader is very versatile, so be sure to experiment and see what kind of cool materials you can come up with. Thanks for watching, and as always, check out our website for more tutorials, artwork, and other cool stuff.